church. Today, I want to talk to you a word that I've entitled, It's not hard, it's done. People from our church are probably used to me speaking on this word, but I want to bring this, the, the, the truth of rest in Jesus. You know that the world today has given us even less reason to be restful. With social media, with our connectedness through the online world, people can present a front to us and we can see the perfection, the perfection of other people's lives and we can be put under a stress and a burden that we're not meant to carry. And I think Jesus addressed this in, in Matthew 11 verse 28 when he said, and he's speaking on a Saturday, he said, Come to me, all you are who are who weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. You know that we can be we can be weary, we can be tired, exhausted with life. We can feel like we're on a treadmill and pumping our legs, trying to achieve and be better at everything that we're doing. We can be low down with the burden of expectation that we would never ever achieve what we think that we should. And like I said, the online world is constantly throwing at us all these things like, are you eating well enough? Are you exercising enough? Is your pantry organized? Are you folding your clothes as good as you should? You know, there are whole Facebook communities and all they do is talk about folding clothes. And I look at my clothes and think, well, they're not like that person's. I haven't thanked that bit of clothing before I put it in the clothing bin. But that's not how we're supposed to live our life on this treadmill of achieving all the time, of the burdens. You know, it's good to excel at life. It's good to be excellent. But if we're taking on all that life is throwing at us and it is weighing us down, there is a rest for you today. Now, I believe that when we enter this rest, we'll actually achieve more than we did before. But we're not meant to be on a relentless treadmill of trying to achieve all the time or trying to take up burdens of things that we're never going to achieve. I haven't even talked about the burden of trying to achieve with God, that we've put uh, performance-based anxieties on ourselves where we feel like we have to attain to certain things that will remove us out of the rest that God is giving. Jesus promised that he would give us rest from all of this weight and burden and weariness. Rest comes from a person. Rest comes from Jesus. Rest doesn't come from achieving because when we achieve something, there's always something more we have to achieve. Rest doesn't come from a holiday. You know, I see a lot of people go away on holidays and I want to go away on a holiday after this shutdown list. That's one thing that we've been talking about is we're going to get away for a few days. You can put your anxieties on pause, but they won't go away. I've seen a lot of people go away on holidays and come back more restless than when they left. But here's the thing. God has a rest that's outside of our achieving. It's outside of our holidays. It's outside of our burdens. And it comes from a person. It actually comes as a reward for believing in Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Rest is the reward of believing in Jesus. It's a precious gift we receive when we believe in Jesus. This is the most important part of the message today, that rest is a gift that comes when we believe and continue believing in Jesus. Now, Jesus said this statement, I will give you rest. He said it on a Saturday. Now, the Saturday for the culture, for the Jews at the time, was the day of rest. So he was intentionally speaking into that. Like, you think that you have rest on a day, but I will give you rest that is well, larger than this day, larger than the law, larger than anything. If we go to Genesis 2 and verse 1 to 3, it's when God was creating all the heavens and the earth and he had finished. It says this, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Now, I like this because it says words like finished and it says done twice. Then it says, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, set it apart because he had rested from all his work, which he had created and made. God rested after the work was finished. He blessed the day and he set it apart. We all know that feeling. We all know the feeling of working really hard and then something's completed and you rest. Maybe it's that assignment that's been hanging over your head. Maybe it's the gardening that you've been ignoring. Maybe it's the paint that you need to put on your walls. 
all of these things that we endeavor to do and then we do them and we come into that restful feeling. The way that I personally relate to this the most is that uh, Joanna and I talk a lot about moving house because together before we were married, we moved house a lot more than normal people. We were on the move a lot. And so we talk a lot, we talk the same stories. How many times have you moved? How many times have you moved? So we both know this feeling really well. It's the feeling of you have a deadline, you have to get all your, your, your furniture out of the house, you have to clean the house and get the furniture into a new house. And what happens is you, you endeavor to pack up the house best you can, you clean it, you dump the furniture and you go get some takeaway. And you sit down and you just breathe and you're like, oh, thank goodness that is done. That is a feeling of rest that comes from completion. It's the feeling that you can have when you don't have something hanging over your head that you need to do. But as long as you have something hanging over your head, there's no rest. Now God, he doesn't have the time constraints that we do because he's the perfect planner. I'm becoming more like God. I'm trying to become more planned. But he has perfect rest all the time because he's never pressured. But when we have something hanging over our head, then we always feel a sense of restlessness. Now God created and then he rested. This is a picture for us that when the work is done, you can rest. Now, Jesus on the cross completed all the work of salvation and he took us out of the debt of sin and released us into grace. Everything is done. Favor is available. So when Jesus took on all of our sin debt and he died on the cross and then he rose again on the third day without our sins, we can see that it is finished. It is completed. Everything that needs to be done for us to have right relationship with God, to enter into blessing and provision and healing and soul prosperity is done on the cross, is done in the resurrection, is done in the work and life of Jesus. We can see that it is done. We can rest knowing that nothing has to be completed. You know, when you look outside your, your window and you see the, um, you see the, the gardening that needs doing, you get a sense of restlessness. But when you look out there and it's done, you get a sense of rest and completion. Where to look at the cross to see the perfection of its completion and enter into that rest. Now, the difference between God's rest and our rest is that, and even in the, in the Old Testament, the Sabbath was on the seventh day. They would work for six days and then rest on the seventh. It was you would work into rest. Now we come to church and are filled up with faith because remember rest is uh, like a reward of faith and we get built up in our faith on the first day. Under the law, it was the seventh. Under grace, it's the first. And that's because under the law and before things are done, you work into rest. But now that we are people of grace, we rest and then we work. It's the complete flip of that. We are working from rest, not into rest. That we start our week, we start our lives from a position of rest and favor and blessing and we work out from there. You see, because when we live in rest, that will give you increase in your life that you can't imagine. When we are re receivers of His rest, that will lead to increase and blessing and even holiness in your life. Whereas the stress that comes from not knowing that everything is done on the cross will lead to decrease and licentious living because you, you, you have no rest in your life. But we actually, we are people of the first day. The substance of Jesus or, or the, the, the Sabbath was a picture, but the reality of Jesus shows us that it's not hard, it's done. That everything we need for our life is done. That problem you're facing, even in your behavior, Jesus conquered it at the cross. That problem you're facing at, in your finances is conquered at the cross. That problem you're facing in your children is conquered at the cross. When we enter into rest, then, we see, then through seeing that it is done and it is a gift, God is able to be released to work and to bring us into the promised land of our believing. But while we don't see that it's done and it's finished, God's hands can't move the way that they want to because we're too busy holding on to things with our stress and anxiety. Now, stress and anxiety essentially comes because we don't believe that God's going to come through for us because we can't see that the payment has been made. We believe that God's good, but maybe that he's not good for, to us. And if we believe that, we're not living in rest. 
but when I see that the full favor and acceptance of God has been purchased on the cross of Jesus, and because of that, God is pouring out His grace and His favor and His blessing onto me and you today, that is extreme faith. Jesus completed all the work and took our debt and released us into grace. If you tuned in last week, we saw that grace is favor given freely from a cheerful disposition. It's not hard, it's done. Grace isn't hard, it's done. So Jesus completed the work and because we are standing in his finished work, it is complete. It's not hard, it's done. I want you to say that to yourself this week when you have anxieties come up. It's not hard, it's done. When you feel the twinge of that pain that you've been struggling with in your body, I'm not saying don't get proper attention. What I'm saying is say to yourself, look at the cross. It's not hard, it's done. He bore the punishment for my sicknesses. He was, he was whipped for my sicknesses. It's not hard, it's done. We start from rest on a Sunday, not a Saturday. Rest is now the presence of belief in Jesus. I'll say that again. I think that's another important statement. Rest is now the presence of belief in Jesus. In Hebrews 4 and verse 3, it says, For we who believe do enter that rest. So if you believe, it says that you're entering into rest. I don't have to try and uh, achieve. I have to monitor my believing. Is my believing in line with what happened at the cross? And again, a few verses down in, in Hebrews 4 and verse 9 and 10, it says, there, uh, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God, for he who has entered God's rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. What does that mean? Is I'm no longer trying to work to come into the blessing. I'm not working to come into rest because I'm taking the example of God who rested on the seventh day. I'm just doing it on the first day because I know that it's his good pleasure to give us that. Now, remember, I said that we work from rest. So I'm not saying that we just sit around eating grapes saying I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm saying that there are things that we do in life, but we do them from rest and they're powerful. I'm not striving to earn the blessing of God. I'm outworking the blessing of God so that people see him and not my striving. Belief in the finished work brings us into rest and increase. When we set our eyes on his work, when we set our eyes on what he has done, his work on the cross, we are gifted rest. There is a supernatural exchange that happens when we look at his work, he gives us his rest. So today, let's purpose to look at his work. It's not hard, it's done. Now, faith does things. Faith acts. Faith works, but acts don't faith. Faith works, works don't faith. Let me explain what that means. It begins from rest first. All the great expressions of faith come from rest. If they don't come from rest, they don't do anything. If we look at Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10, I want to just quickly describe this uh, reality. It says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Speaking without believing saves no one. It's not the prayer that saves you, it's the believing. But believing speaks. Paul said, we who have the same spirit of faith speak. So there are things that faith does. But instead of trying to figure out the right things to do, look at the cross. Focus on Jesus and his finished work and that will instruct you the things that we need to do. By the word, if we're in the word and we're looking at the finished work of Jesus and we're guided by the Holy Spirit, he will instruct us into the works we need to do. There's no blanket rule. There's so many access points into faith and into grace. You can't, you know, people say, well, this is the thing that's going to release a blessing to your life. If you do this, this is going to release a blessing. It may have worked for them because it was their expression of faith. 
But if you look at Jesus, your number one priority is to be built up with his life and see his finished work. And that will instruct you about what to do with your faith because faith isn't passive. We don't just sit back and do nothing, but also grace will instruct you about what to do. Faith does things, but from rest, not to rest. We act from rest, not to rest. Let rest instruct us. You know, the fathers of faith in, in Genesis, they all did things, probably unbeknownst to them in some ways, because remember, they didn't have the word that did things to act on their face. And we can get insights about the dynamic of faith. We find out that out of rest, we speak. That's Abraham. God changed his name to father of many nations. And all of a sudden, he's speaking, I am a father of many nations. Out of rest, we sow. Isaac sowed in famine and reaped a hundredfold. Now, if you look at that, if, if a normal farmer makes at least $100,000, what's a hundred times that? We're talking about extreme wealth. So out of rest, we sow. I don't sow to get into rest, but we sow out of rest. From rest, out from rest. Out of rest, we see. Jacob set up the sticks, saw the speckles, the sheep's changed. Those, I'm just leaving a little teaser for people who want to go deeper than this message, is that there are a lot of acts of faith. Speaking being the main one. You'll have whatever you say. He who talks to the mulberry bush. But if you don't, if you're speaking without believing, it's not going to do much. Now, there are certain laws that if you speak positively, it will have positivity in your life. And I would encourage you to only speak positively. But the dynamic of faith is that when you believe and then that belief leads you to speak in a new dimension, then things happen in the faith realm that access grace, like last week's sermon. But what it starts from is a place of rest. When I look at the finished work of Jesus and I see his work and I fall more in love with him every day and I see his scars and his stripes and I endeavor to look and be at rest, that will instruct my works. So it's not that we're doing nothing, it's that we're do where are we doing it from? Now remember that rest is a reward of believing in Jesus. In fact, more accurately, rest is a reward of believing that the work is completed. The work of Jesus has been completed, that he sat down at the right hand of God and it is finished. So our job is not to try and muster up works, but it's to see Jesus and be transformed. And this is so different to everything that is being thrown at you in the world and a majority of preachers because people want to attain to something. When the Bible says the wisdom of God is that you would see his son, and you would be transformed and you would receive rest and peace and you would work from there. So this week, I want us to be intentional to look up and see Jesus in a new way, to find out about where exactly his finished works are. It, find promises like there's a promise that says he was made poor, that we would be, he who was rich was made poor, that we would be made rich in him, that by his stripes, we are healed, that he was made a sin offering, that we would be the righteousness of God. Start looking at the verses in the Bible that talk about how Jesus has finished the work, that, that in the Psalms it says he was hounded by the bulls of Bashan, that there was things that came against his mind so that your mind could be set free. Let's have a look that he was rejected by men, his brethren, so that you could have good relationships with your brothers. So let's have a look at the word and see how his finished work is stirring up believing and rest in us to believe for something extraordinary. I want to pray for our week. I want to pray that we see Jesus in a new way and that we enter into the rest that God has for us. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you came and you died and you finished the work. You rose again to present us holy and blameless and without reproach in God's eyes. So we just thank you and we ask you to lead us into new paths of your word, to excite us with your word, to believe for more and to enter into rest. I pray that you would instruct us with your grace, like it says in Titus, that the grace of God would instruct us and that we would know how to act and what we can do to access the grace that you have poured on in our lives. We speak blessing and increase on everybody this week, that they would increase in every area and be in rest in Jesus name. Amen.